So we all know that there's tons to do inside of the famous Austin city limits, but there's even more to explore in all of the surrounding communities. And today we're headed to one that's just a stone's throw away, a very round stone. Round rock! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. To find The Rock, all you gotta do is find Austin and then head about 20 miles north. It's also a great day trip from Waco to the north or San Antonio to the south, both about an hour and a half away. Nowadays, many see Round Rock as a suburb, nothing more. And if you just drove by on the highway, it would be hard to think any different. But explorers rejoice, because there are many things to find for those that venture beyond the beaten path, including, you guessed it. So you know the name came from somewhere, and here it is. Did you know that there was an actual round rock? It was formed by the rushing waters here on Brushy Creek, and it was used as a natural landmark for travelers and cattle drivers making their way on the Chisholm Trail. Because when they'd reached the round rock, they'd made it to round rock. Well, we've certainly made it to our destination. Brushy Creek is a nice bit of nature right in the middle of the bustling city. The creek bed even has deep markings from when wagons and stagecoaches used to cross this way. Yes, Round Rock was a land forged by pioneers and cattle drivers. But that's not the only round thing this town is known for. Let's go get some breakfast. From the round and inedible to the round and delectable. This is Round Rock Donuts, world famous since 1926. And if these bright yellowy orangey circles look nothing like any donut you've ever seen, well good, because that's the point. Their world famous donut was by far the best donut I've ever had. You're kidding, <laughs> really? No, really. Uh, it's something about the different glaze that they have. It's different than any uh, other donut that I've ever had before. They're the best donuts in the world. And so we drove from Leander this morning for a special treat. Um, it doesn't matter how long the line is, we will wait in line um, through the drive-thru to make sure that we get our Round Rock Donuts. Whether waiting in the drive-thru section or staying in the sitting section, this place is sure to do damage to your midsection. But you'll love every bite of it. Time to step into the back and see what sort of addictive, golden, delicious ingredients they put into these things to keep the customers coming back. All right, so this is Polo Garcia, the manager here, and he has brought us into the inner sanctum of Round Rock Donuts. Hey, welcome, Chad. You know, as you can see behind me, you know, we have a whole process of making donuts. It takes a while, but at the end, it's a good result. That's what makes them good, right? Yes. So walk me through a little bit of this. Sure, I will. You know, first of all, we mix the dough, fresh from scratch, and then uh, after that, we let it rise the dough. We cut it in pieces, let it rise again, cut it up, put them in proof boxes, and get them right to the fryer. And now I see that by this point they already had that signature Round Rock Donut color, so where's that come from? You know, it's a little secret, but you know, that egg yolk, mm -hmm. it was, that color was pretty dense color on the egg. Yeah. I should have oh. said something like that. Oh, no. So this is the egg yolks that make it? Yeah, it's part oh. of the secret. I think we just found the secret formula for Round Rock Donuts. We Get to the lab, we gotta work this out. Yeah, even if I studied a thousand years, I'm not sure I could duplicate it. You wanna try it? What the yeah. heck is that thing? Here we go. No kidding, that is awesome. So this whole thing is really just done by hand. Yes, done by hand, done by hand, that's right. You know I've gotta try some. Sweet, isn't it? It is, <laughs> it is sweet. I think they can be better when they hit the fryer though, but still, that's not bad. And that's the next step. Once the dough is ready, uh -huh. you know, it's ready to fry, we get the screen and it's ready to roll. And then, so how long are they gonna be in the fryer? Probably about three minutes. Oh, three minutes, so you gotta be on your game. You, you have to here. be, you have to be on it. These are already done, so I had to pull them out. Boom down. You talk about old fashioned donuts. It is an old fashioned oh. donut. This is where the magic happens. That is the magic right there. Look at this big bath of donut glaze. <laughs> uh, you're gonna get one too. Okay, fine. This is called quality control right here. Let me say one, two, two three. three. Mm. 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 It melts in your mouth. It, it does. I don't even have to chew this thing. Mm -hmm. Oh man. But it's only an appetizer, my friends. Now, small donuts are good, but this is Texas. 
So Polo has either set us up for our greatest success or our greatest failure. Because if I eat this whole donut, I'm gonna be done for the day. Mm. And the greatest part is if anybody asks how many donuts I ate this morning, all I have to say is just one. I just had one donut, no big deal. While this is a mighty sugary way to start the day, it's not the only sweet spot in Round Rock. There's also our next stop. As if we don't already have enough sugar in our system, let's add some honey. Honey? This is Round Rock Honey, and we're not here for a sugar rush yet. The main reason we are here is education and to learn about those underappreciated buzzing buddies that make the world a sweeter place. All right, so this is Jay Tharlson with Round Rock Honey. Well, tell me a little bit about what you guys do here. Well, here at Round Rock Honey, we, uh, we bottle honey and we also uh, raise bees. This is one of seven different locations around the country. Uh, and we teach all aspects of uh, beekeeping, uh, the introduction all the way to the advanced level of beekeeping. Whether you have your own hive or are just as curious as a bee, these classes are very interesting. This is Jim Hogg, one of the expert teachers. Uh, I'm a school teacher by trade. My hobby is saving honeybees. So when I'm not saving students, I save bees. All the classes are fairly small, giving every student personal attention for all of your buzzing questions. <laughs> bee joke. The classes cover topics like beehives, such as one you could build for yourself. There are different types of hives. This style we see here is called the Langstroth hive. Bee behaviors, stings, pests, and even bee anatomy. The worker and the queen are both females, and the only male is the drone. Uh, the queen lives on average about two years in the wild. Uh, the worker bee lives 45 days. You'd be amazed what contribution bees make to our daily life. A third of what we eat is a product either directly or indirectly to honeybees. If you, you'd be amazed what would not be at the grocery store if we didn't have bees. So as we're learning, bees do much more than make honey and ruin picnics. And while all this classroom stuff is super interesting, I've always loved a good field trip, especially when it requires a costume. We are headed to one of Round Rock Honey's hives for hands-on learning. Hands-on with gloves on, of course. We get our tools ready, and here we are. We pump in smoke to simulate a forest fire. If the bees think their hive is going down, they start eating as fast as they can. And with full bellies, like us, they get sleepy. And sleepy bees aren't stingy bees. We can call. All right, well, this is the honey area. Let's see what we got up here. Well, I'm shining right here. If you look in there, between this yellow and this white, see if you don't see some little white eggs. You'll have to get up close and look in the hole. The yellow is the pollen, it's in there all the white, that's the larva. Look at those big sacks of pollen hanging out on her back legs. That's the good stuff she's bringing back to the hive. <laughs> I've never been so calm standing in a swarm of bees. <laughs> this is crazy, because with the suit you almost feel invincible. You get right up close to them. Now look how wet this looks. That's honey. You may be wondering, why do bees make honey? Well, it's actually their food source. They make it to eat it. That's pure liquid goodness inside of these little little cells here. <laughs> Look at that. Oh man, I just made some bees really mad. So honeybees don't just make the honey, they eat the honey. So the second one of these breaks, man, it's on. That's a meal right there. So they're coming in, licking it up, making sure they don't lose any of it. It's kind of mean because I, I just want to take it and eat it, but I can't make it through my hood. The tasting actually happens back at the headquarters, which is bottling up the good stuff and set up like it is on a normal tour day, ready for a honey tasting. And since honey starts with pollen, that's where we're starting to. It kind of tastes like you're eating a dusty flower. Um, <laughs> it, it, it really does taste like what you would think uh, pollen would taste like, so. Oh, very dusty. It is dusty. Sort of like licking a tree or then maybe the second tasting should be some water. Probably. Probably. I'll be right back. <laughs> now to the honey, all from different parts of the world with wildly different flavors. I don't know how to describe that one. It's really good. Kind of kind of smoky. Smoky. I was gonna mm -hmm. I was gonna go malty. Yeah. Interesting. Probably the biggest misconception uh, people make is that honey is honey is honey. It varies uh, from city block to city block and out in the country, you know, depending on what's growing there. Different flavors, different smells, different clarity, different thicknesses. I've been doing honey wrong. I've been pouring it into stuff. Truthfully, you should just be eating the honey. It's so good. That's what we tell everyone. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jay. I think I'm going to have to uh, buy a big jar like this for myself. I think we got some around. Good deal. <laughs> thanks, man. You're welcome.
Before I chug a gallon of honey, we better find something a bit more substantial for my belly. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. So while the bees are busy making honey, the squirrels in Round Rock are busy too, but they're making sandwiches. Or at least the blind squirrels are. This is Blind Squirrel Sandwiches, one of those unexpected, amazingly great places that you never saw coming. Owned by Jack Rea, who is neither blind nor a squirrel, but a chef trained at the famed Culinary Institute of America, meaning these sandwiches are nuts. Your menu is full of these insanely creative sandwiches, so how did you get inspired for them? You know, sometimes I'm taking a shower, washing my hair, and you say, oh, that'll, that'll work. That'll work. That's, it's just taking classical dishes, a lot of these classical dishes, and making them into a sandwich that everybody can appreciate. Because the sandwich is kind of overlooked. So we're, we're just trying to like make it a little bit more of what it could be. We try to do a little, little bit of fusion stuff. For instance, we do uh, the Paris, Texas, which is a confit of beef brisket. <laughs> I gotta say, that's a spin on Texas barbecue I don't think you'll find anywhere else. That's <laughs> awesome. And then I see you got duck up there, lots of pork up there, uh, salmon up there. Yeah, shrimp and salmon. We, we try to take different spots from different parts of the world and kind of put them together. Bottom line is we like to play with our food. That, that's really it, you know? And sandwiches, unlike any others, keeps this place packed. What did you think the first time you read through the menu? It's uh, it's pretty intense. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Are you intimidated, like by the duck or the salmon wrap? Uh, I mean, I'll try anything. Yeah, they're all they're all pretty pretty good. Uh -huh. But I have to admit that my absolute favorite is the Paris. The Paris. That's the brisket yes. one. It is. It was delicious. I had the chicken maximus, and you can make any sandwich into a salad. So I went the healthy option. There you go. There you go. Cut the bread. It still looks delicious. But, you know, stepped up food, yet it's very casual and down to earth kind of place. And every time you walk in here, Jack always comes and checks in on you and sees how how you're doing. It's a very homey place. I definitely do not have sandwiches like this at my home, which is making me hungry. Now, I'm not lying when I said every sandwich on that menu sounded amazing, but I decided to go with the Quacker. It's their number one bestseller. Look at this. Kind of looks like pork, kind of looks like beef, but it's actually duck. It's on kind of a fried flatbread. It's smoked with tea. It's got some onions on it, some peppers, and then it's topped with some hoisin sauce. Jack said it's a three-day process. Mm -mm -mm. The richness of the duck, and then you top it with hoisin sauce. It's got slaw on it. I don't even know if you could call this thing a sandwich. It's more like an Asian taco on kind of a Indian flatbread. <laughs> it's a Frankenstein of deliciousness. Oh, that is incredible. A lot of people may be intimidated by duck, but don't be. If it's cooked well, it is so rich, kind of tastes like extremely flavorful dark chicken meat. Mmm. Blind squirrels find nuts, and we've found one heck of a sandwich. Now to see what else we can find in the heart and soul of Round Rock's historic district. It's a charming little stretch of homes and buildings that despite Round Rock's rapid growth, hasn't changed in a hundred years. Now today all these historic buildings are full of upstanding and respectable businesses, but there was a time when this whole area was a lot rougher, especially on the day the outlaw died. That outlaw was Sam Bass, a restless train robber whose legend and infamy was as big as Texas. In 1878, Sam and his gang came to Round Rock for their final attempted bank robbery. All right, crew, we're gonna reenact the final Sam Bass shootout. Y'all ready? All right, I'm gonna be Bass. Uh, Todd Kelly, y'all are with me. John Mark, Lindsey, Mary, Richie. Y'all are the law dogs, okay? Good guys get leather hats, bad guys get straw hats just like me, and uh, here's your pop guns, okay? Now here's how it'll work. Bad guys, we're gonna go over here and top some horses. Good guys, y'all stay on Main Street and wait for us, okay? All right, ready? Break. All right, gang, the bank's right over there. We're gonna rob it. So let's tie up these horses and head to the store. I gotta buy a few uh, important things. So as Sam and his gang rounded onto Main Street, two deputy sheriffs spotted them. Now they didn't recognize who they were at first, but they did want to ask them some questions about their peculiar firearms.
Oh no. Ask me about my guns. Oh. What about your guns? Oh, what do you mean? These guns? Bang, 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 bang. You're, you're dead now. Oh. You died. Oh. Bang. Oh no, boys. We've been found out. Let's run for it. Hey, where are you going? None of your business. Bang, 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 bang. We shot you in the chest. Oh, I got shot in the, I got shot in the chest. All right. Oh no, boys, we gotta get out of here. It was at this point the Texas Ranger Dick Ware emerged from the barber shop, face still lathered from a shave. Oh, there goes the basket. Hey, hey. Oh no! Oh man, bullets were flying everywhere. It was at this point that they landed a fatal shot on one of Sam's trusted gang members. I'm sorry, Kelly, but that's you. You get out here. Oh no, they got her! Get out of here! Gun smoke filled Main Street, and then a single bullet ran out and pierced the final and fatal shot into Bass's chest. Oh! The final and fatal shot has pierced my chest! Get to the horses! Get to the horses! Oh, it looks like it's the end for me, Jackson. Well, wait, wait a minute. We still have more places to go in the episode. No, right? no, not in the episode. Like in this shootout thing we're doing. Oh, got it. Okay, right, got right. Okay. Stick with okay. me here, okay? Got it. It, oh, got Jackson, it. it looks like it's the end. You leave me here to die. Okay, see ya. Wait, what? You're not even gonna like try to stay oh, with me till okay, the I'm end? Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're a great friend, man. I will never, ever leave you. Oh, that's much better. Never. That's much better. But no, Jackson. You have a life to live beyond the hills. You must leave me here. But, 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 but before you go, one more question. Where'd you hide the gold? Oh, all right, yeah. The gold is all in. Yeah. Oh. Dag Nabbit. An outlaw gone, his gold never to be found. But Sam Bass's name lives on, both in legend and in road name. Which brings us to a different road. One that's far less traveled and a bit more scary. Or should we say, more hairy. Okay guys, here we are. I, I didn't want to drive down this road. I mean, even in the daytime, it is just way too scary. But this is Hairy Man Road. And legend has it that these woods are haunted by the spirit of an old hermit who used to live out here. Big long beard, uh, nasty hair. Chet. Kelly, I'm telling a story here, all right? He hated travelers coming by his home. And so what he would do is wait in the woods for just the right moment. Chet, and it, um, Kelly, I'm telling a story. Just wait, be patient, okay? And at just the moment when they least expected it, he would jump out. <laughs> ah, 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 he's here! I'm Harry Man Road! I told you we shouldn't come down here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things can get pretty hairy if you let them. But we've got no time for fur balls. And since we've eaten quite a bit today, I think it's about time we start exercising some of it off. After all, Round Rock is the official sports capital of Texas. So sports aren't just for pros, they're for everybody. And that's how Round Rock rolls. With fields and facilities for... Baseball! Volleyball, soccer, football, basketball. Oh. With all of its facilities and fields combined, Round Rock can host approximately a million youth tournaments a weekend. That might be a bit of an exaggeration, but there are a ton of them. And the folks in Round Rock really are quite sporty. Disc golf, biking, even cricket. Now, if you're less of a participator and more of a spectator when it comes to sports, then you'll love our day's last stop because this sports capital's most beloved sports team is in town for game night. Since 2000, the Round Rock Express have been given Central Texas one of the best minor league experiences in America. And what else would you expect from the great Nolan Ryan and his family? All right, so this is Mr. Reese Ryan. Not only is he a member of the Ryan Dynasty here in Texas, but also the CEO of the Round Rock Express. Wait, well, hey, thank you so much for having us out to a game. Glad you guys are here. Oh yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about, you know, the whole experience that is to be had here at an Express You game. know, that's the great thing about minor yeah. league baseball, is it, it's a 
fan-friendly, fun environment. We've got great baseball. These guys are some of the best baseball players in the world, but we also have, you know, something for everybody. And then also, man, the food here is incredible. Well, you know, that's something we're really proud of, and we brought all that in-house this year, and it's been, it's been one of the best things we've ever done. And we've got some really unique items on the menu, which I'm sure you guys will get to see. And yeah. uh, a lot of fun. We're really proud of it. So, Matt, you guys have some dedicated fans. Don't miss a game. We do, we do. We actually, uh, I can tell you who sits in what seat and what night they're going to be here. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's fun. Having repeat customers is, is uh, something that's really important to us. And despite everything going on at the Dell Diamond, to some, it's still all about what happens on the baseball diamond. All right, so I understand you're the man who hasn't ever missed a Round Rock Express game. True? Oh, that would be correct. Same seat. Same seat and not bad seats at that. Oh, absolutely. We came out to the ballpark when it was being built before the seats were here, and I was actually standing here with my wife <laughs> and saying, okay, well, this is where we're going to be oh, right here. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so I hear you go by the name Ballpark Frank. <laughs> I was I was dubbed that uh, on the interview out here, and uh, it is stuck. This is my spot for 15 years. What is it that keeps you coming back? The theme, the spirit. Everybody from the top all the way to the bottom. bottom. It's, a, it's a, a fine organization. This organization has taken minor league baseball games to a whole new level. The stadium has a rock wall, a swimming pool, basketball, and a baseball game? Why not? There are shenanigans to watch in between innings and hills to roll down. But before I get too involved, the thing I need most is a baseball cap. That's the actual player hat right there. What do you think? I can't wear a cowboy hat at a baseball game. I need a baseball hat. Yeah? Hey? Hey? I think this is the one right here. A shirt? <laughs> Show the guns. Yeah, right. <laughs> My uh, Round Rock Donut supported guns right there. Mwah. Yeah, better make it a jersey. Now I'm set. This is the fun of coming to a minor league baseball game. There's so much excitement in the air. I mean, the stadiums are smaller, so every seat in the house is a good seat. You smell the hot dogs, see the popcorn. I mean, there's so many families here, it's really cool. You got lots of old timers, the little tiny young kids. That's what makes baseball so much fun. And it all happens right here at the games. When I say this ain't your normal stadium, well, that includes the food. It's chef-inspired grub. They're all Nolan Ryan beef dogs, of course, but how about a dog with avocado and mango salsa? Or one with blue cheese coleslaw and Frank's hot sauce? Or a hot dog wrapped in a grilled cheese? Genius. Of course, you can go with the classic, but I feel the call of the island, my friends. Big kahuna, mango salsa, pineapple mustard, Nolan Ryan hot dog. The whole experience of a Round Rock Express game is great, especially on your birthday. And psst, it's Kelly's birthday today. And it looks like I've got some surprises of my own in store. Tonight's seventh inning stretch. We turn the honors over to the first base dugout where Chet Garner is going to be Who's ready to see? Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to What a day. In a town where the rocks and donuts are round, the squirrels are blind, the men are hairy, and some of the most fun happens on a diamond, you'll find one rocket day trip. Of course, it's okay to be square, but wouldn't you rather be round? So I think you'll agree that this is the way to rock the rock. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye! Bye. 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 That was a good job, guys. Well done and it was formed by the rushing waters here on Brushy Creek. Because when they made it to the Round Rock, they had made it to Round Rock. <laughs> I, I messed that up. Here, Kelly, I got you a donut. This is for breakfast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Richie, here's your piece. <laughs> oh, man.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.